here we go again. Uh, good morning. Uh, Carol and I are, Carol's filming this and I'm sharing thoughts from uh, Psalm 20, 32 as well as from the book of Romans. Um, it's good to be together this morning. Mikasa Sukasa. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I pray now that you grant us a blessing as we come into your holy word and into your holy presence. Uh, may we be open to uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we also be kind and thoughtful to one another. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been looking at the book of Romans and Paul's uh, living into our Lenten series on confession, forgiveness, or confession, repentance, and then forgiveness. And once we're forgiven, then we want to be right with God and right with others. So it's a way of living uh, initiated by that no acknowledgement that we fall short, that we all sin, and we need God's grace. I thought it'd be important for us to start off with the 32nd chapter of, of the Psalms. We've been reading this as a church family now uh, throughout this month of, of March. And so let's read some of these together, some of these verses. Happy are those whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom God imputes no iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. So he's talking there about the need to be forgiven, but also to, to, to confess. Just say, I, I miss the mark, Lord, forgive me. And then he writes, then I acknowledge my sin to you. That's the confession. And I did not hide my iniquity. I just open with you. I just open with you, God. And I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. I think Paul certainly lived uh, with the guilt of his sin for a long time. And, and he, like King David, realized that he didn't have to live in that uh, state of guilt. Uh, why live a life of guilt? So, so Paul knew what King David was saying uh, and that God really do, does want to forgive us. So by faith, we approach our loving Heavenly Father. Uh, he says, it's by faith, yours and my understanding of God's grace and his love. We, by faith, we make a movement back to Heavenly Father. Jesus' life here on earth was a way uh, that God was drawn closer to us and we can draw closer to him. The book of Romans was Paul's way of describing the Christian journey from selfishness to selflessness. And so... By faith through grace, we become heirs of life eternal, Paul said. Because of our continual self, uh, uh, our tendency to sin, because of that continual, con, uh, continual sinfulness, we need a consistent advocate. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So Paul says to the Romans, with God's help, we don't have to be slaves to our sin. It's through the daily confession that we are set free. We're living a different, we now are living obviously in a very difficult time. But please remember, God does his best work in times of darkness and when time is difficult. I'd like for us to look at uh, chapter 6 and 7 just briefly. I'm not going to read any of that, but just bring to your attention that chapter 6 and 7 of Roman has Paul spending more time sharing our struggles with living right and doing wrong. Paul asks, why do I do the things I shouldn't do and I don't do the things I should? That quandary. But Jesus res uh, rescues us, he says in chapter 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is now in the 8th chapter, and so I'd like for us to just spend the rest of our time in the 8th chapter of uh, Paul's thoughts to the people in Rome. 
Um, the 18th verse, Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. That's an intriguing thing that Paul talks about suffering uh, because he did suffer. Within his Christian lifetime, he was shipwrecked twice. He was beaten, ridiculed. Uh, he was starved near to death um, and then imprisoned. And so here is a man who then in verse 28 says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. Now this may be one of the more uh, stumbling blocks of the comments from Paul. All things work for good. I don't think he's suggesting that everything is good uh, because he knows what suffering was like and the hardships of life. But when we are seeking God to be in a relationship with God day in and day out, then life moves towards goodness and wholeness, completeness, even in the midst of struggles and turmoil. Then he goes on to write in this eighth chapter, what then can we say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for us all, will he not be with us and give everything to us? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who, it, who is to condemn? Is Christ Jesus who died? Yes. Who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Hand of God who indeed intercedes for us? Jesus interceding for you and me. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Coronavirus? As it is written, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nothing in all of creation will separate you and me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that's really what Paul uh, stands firmly with, even though he knew himself to sin continued to do things he shouldn't do and not do the things he should. He knew unequivocally that God was still there. And that's where we stand as people of faith, that nothing can separate us. Next week will be Holy Week, and I'd like for us to spend a few minutes with chapter 12. So you can look at chapter 12 ne next week with me. This is Paul's description of this new life in Christ. After uh, confessing, Repenting, that is turning around, being forgiving and forgiving others, Jesus is then able to reshape us to be the people God wants us to be. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>